the session. We're going okay. to get started. Yes. I'd like to introduce you to the wonderful Emmy Everett, who is the supervisor of instructional development at Georgia Virtual School. We're going to jump right in. All right. Um, I get to be wonderful. Jay was great. So I hope we both lived up to that. I don't know. We'll see. Um, okay, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this so I make sure you're in the right place. We are going to be talking about technical stuff like badge OS and implementation and that kind of stuff. If you're in the wrong place, feel free to get up because I don't want to bore you for 25 minutes even. So um, just wanted to make sure you knew what you were in for. Um, as he said, I'm the supervisor of instructional <coughs> development at Georgia Virtual School, which has absolutely nothing to do with what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> so I spent a lot of time over the past month kind of learning about Badge OS and some implementation. So I have a couple questions. How many of you are familiar with Badge OS? Okay, I feel a little bit better because I was like, if you really know it, you should probably leave because I don't. <laughs> so if you Badge OS experts have anything you want to throw in there, feel free to raise your hand. Or if I say anything really goofy, I am not claiming to be the um, know-all person here. So. Um, we're going to talk about a few things. Now, how many of you were in the session with Jay just a minute ago? Okay, so we're going to talk a little overlap, but i got to catch some folks up. So you'll see a couple slides that look a little familiar, but it'll make more sense if we go over the whole process. So here's what we're going to be talking about. The software that we need, okay, a little bit of technical requirements, and then we're going to talk about planning. Those of you who have used Badge OS, is planning a big deal? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, that was the one thing, the guy that actually built our system and was working on our system, he says you have to emphasize that. They have to plan. You can't just shoot from the hip and make this work. So, um, we will emphasize that for sure. Then we're going to talk a little bit about the um, implement, implementing your plan, and then I will take some questions. I'm hoping to spend 25 minutes talking. So, um, first of all, the software that you need is uh, made by a company called Learning Time. Anybody familiar with Learning Times? Worked with any of that? My say Badge OS folks, I guess. Okay, and what they had, it used to be a, a program called Badge Stack. If you knew it then, it was a separate program. Now it's called Badge OS, which is a, a WordPress plugin, and it's free. But that's what it was morphed into. So if you've ever heard of Badge Stack, very similar, but now called Badge OS. All right, technical requirements. Um, how many of you, this is probably a better one, how many of you are familiar with WordPress? Okay, I got a few more folks. Okay, for those of you who didn't write, raise your hand. I have this little video, and it's just a minute long, to tell you a little bit about WordPress. I'm sure they can't tell you much of what you need to know in a minute, but he's going to tell you something, hopefully. My connection. It's awesome. It's awesome? Is that what somebody said? <laughs> okay, well in order for you to, to function, <coughs> Participate, navigate, create, 
communicate, and evaluate. So those were our five main overarching pieces. Now, under each of those five skills came competencies. Now, here's where I actually fit into this project. Um, because I'm the supervisor of instructional development, I serve as one of the subject matter experts in the CREATE module. So now I can speak to that with a little bit of information, all right? I feel like I know what I'm talking about. So under CREATE, we came up with four competencies. And that was um, planning. We talked a little bit about managing your time and how you have to be on top of that. Um, web tools. So we go in, we give them some examples of web tools. We have them go find some web tools. We talk about OER and Creative Commons, which fits in great here, and um, building learning objects or finding learning objects and determining if they're useful in your class. So those are the four main competencies under Create. Okay. Now, under each of the competencies, and the one I picked was OER because it fits here, um, one of the quests for the open education section of competency was to locate OER resources, and they have a little assignment in a quest. So those are the main pieces, all right? And I'm going to show you what our whole system looks like in a graphic, and this makes a little more sense. So that big badge at the top is everything. So if you finish everything, you get that badge, OK? In the blue, you see the five skills, all right? So those are the five that we listed off. Then underneath there, so I'm going to show you. Here's our big badge. Underneath there, each one of those skills has a green badge that represents the competency. <coughs> and then under the competency, you have to complete the blue dots, which are the quests. So I'm a math teacher, trained math teacher, so I'm very linear. So you see we have four. Each one of the four has three. That was my mathematical self. Um, you can see not everybody did that. <laughs> Some of them are one to one. You do one quest, you get one badge. Some of them, um, not on this screen, but before there were even some that had four quests, five quests that you had to complete in order to get the badge, okay? So in order for us to talk about badge OS, you kind of had to have that picture. Any questions about that just in general? I think that's not too tough. Good. All right, so let's talk about implementation then. So the first thing that had to be built were the actual discussion posts and forums. We opted on this first go-round. Um, the only things we have the teachers do when they submit a quest is they're either going to participate in the discussion or they're going to post a link to their blog. So those are the only two things we have going on right now. I'm going to talk about some other options you may have if you use Badge OS, but those are the two that we use right now. So the first thing that we had to do was build those discussion posts. And remember, I talked about um, 3.1. 3.1.3 is locating resources. So that was our quest, but we have to have a place for them to put their information. So that's in the discussion post. And that's actually part of WordPress. You can see right there on the far left that there's a post. So we created this just like you would if you're familiar with an LMS, you make a discussion post, but that's the, the bit. We put in the information they needed to know. The, the hyperlink actually does take them to the quest page, which has some more information if somehow they got here and needed a backtrack, they could get back out. Now one thing I do want to point out, you see the, the image that's there? We had somebody on staff create all the images. Now Badge OS has some stock in images, some generic things you can use, but we had someone go build those because I think when the image really represents what it is you're doing and it, it, it means something, it's a little better than just picking up a picture um, off of a page. So you can see that this, remember we talked about the fact that my linear self did three quests, so there's our one third of this one to earn that badge. So hopefully the, the user understands that and in the system you can actually put the featured image and you can put it in there so that it shows up on the page. Okay? So here we've actually made the discussion post. WordPress. All right, after we did that, we have to actually build the quest. So this part, again on the far left, you can see we've installed our Badge OS um, plugin, and under the Badge OS, there's several choices, and one of those choices is a quest. So we built the quest, we have our little editor there. What you see for images, the three above it are the three we're not working on, okay? There were four total under my um, create section. So those are the three we're not working on. We are working on 
This one, which is the OER Creative Commons one, we're working on a third of it, and that three that's kind of lit up there shows me that I'm working on the third part of that. All right, so they kind of understand. We are having some talks amongst ourselves to try and simplify that a little bit so that they don't get lost in that big picture because it can happen really easily. All of a sudden I'm in here and I'm working on something, I'm not sure where I was or what I finished and backtracking, so that is a little tricky. So this just has some general um, information and actually some content, and these are all screenshots so I can't um, scroll through, we may be able to go later. But um, some information takes into the Creative Commons license, talks about fair use in the TEACH Act, we go into a bunch of um, information about open educational resources and how they can be used. Now let's talk a little bit about what they have choices of. We said that our choice right now, discussion post or post to a blog. That's what we're doing. So um, I'm going to skip that part since points toward it. I'll get right there. So ours is earned by completing steps. And in just a second, I'm going to show you what the step was. But this little image right here is the actual drop down. So here were your choices. You could complete steps, which I'm going to show you. You could do a um, minimum number of points, okay? So that comes up to our points awarded. I could do five quests. Some of them may be one point quests or two point quests or three point quests, and maybe they have to earn a minimum of four points. So they could do any combination, and once they hit their four points, they got their badge. So you could level those easy ones for one, more difficult ones for three, and they could do it that way. So that's your um, point system there. The other choice is there, submissions that are reviewed and submissions that are auto-accepted. The reviewed one kind of comes back, those of you that were in here, we have a model where we're going to review um, what the, they posted. We could simply have them post, the sky is blue, we kidded about that, okay? And that auto-submit, boom, here it is, there it goes, okay? But if it has to be reviewed, we're going to go in there and look and make sure we got quality information. So you do have that choice. Um, obviously, reviewing those takes time and manpower, so you have to determine that. You can have a nomination award where other users that are registered nominate someone, and I think you can specify the number of nominations they get in order to do it. So if you want 10 nominations or two nominations, then they can um, be awarded that badge. Or you can have an admin awarded badge. And a couple of sessions ago, they were talking about those that kind of people don't know about, and all of a sudden, poof, you got a really cool badge, and it makes you all happy and excited. So that can be an uh, admin awarded badge. Then the other options that we don't have on ours, because we allow you to navigate however you'd like. You don't have to do anything in any order. Don't drive me crazy, because I want to do it all in order. But OK, for those of you who like to jump around, you can do that. Um, but I could check that box that says, yes, you have to do it in order. Force you to do it my way. Um, you can check a box that says, show the people that have earned this. And then we just have a little success. You know, well done, you've done this one, yay, moving on. Okay. Let's get back to our choice was completing steps. So right below this, you see that then we have required steps. And my required step was to comment on a post one time. Okay. Now this little screenshot that I had to hide down here is the drop down for there. So our choice was you could log into a website. You could tell me a website you need to go to. If they do it, you get a badge. Um, we're doing comment on a post. Now I did question the guy that built this, and maybe some of my badge OS people will know. Comment on a post and publish a new post. Do you anybody know the difference between those? It's to me. Oh look, you don't want to do no, it's two. Um, <laughs> when it, that's good, I have ten minutes. Um, to publish a new post seemed like a new thing. Like I haven't published a post, so I'm gonna do a new one. Um, Jeff told me that they were told to do comment on a post. If you really get into it, you can figure out what the difference between those two are. And um, publishing a new page has to do with the WordPress part. They can go in and publish a page. Um, and then we're going to talk about achievement types in just a second. I'll show you an example of those. Now, the other part I wanted to point out right here was that there are bad sharing options, and we're not to that point yet. But right here, you can see send it to Credly. We are an issuer with Credly, and we're going to have those badges available there. And we'll have our um, students the teachers that participate with us can then earn their badge and have it um, sent to Credly. We haven't got that integration working yet, but it is possible and it will work. So I'm told. So. All right, so that was our quest. All right, so now remember that each one of our quests, now you see my whole circle. So it took three quests 
to get that badge. All right, and that badge represents my competency for open educational resources. So there's a little blurb right there, I know you guys can't see it very well, that talks about what we're gonna do for this part of the competency. And just so you can see, a lot of this is similar, but here you see the achievement data. This is the same page, and again, completing the steps. But this time, the steps are achievement types. So I have three specific achievement types that had to be done. The one we saw was locating resources quest. And you can see that it's linked there. You designated a quest, you tell me I have to do it one time, and they're done. So there are two others that go there with understanding what OER is and Creative Commons, and then what fair use in the TEACH Act, how that applies to a teacher in a classroom, okay? So then they do those steps right there, save all our steps and move on. So that was our competency badge. So now we've done the post where we put it, we've linked it to the quest where we gave them the information, we've taken those three quests and put them with the competency. So what we have left is to take all the competencies and link them with the skill. So now can you guys see where the planning is hugely important? You can't just start putting stuff in there, it doesn't work. So um, this is the skill, and the skill was create, and here's my little create badge. Um, it gives them just a generic, again, information on that. This looks similar. We're gonna complete steps, and we can do, these are specific achievement types. Now what you can do in those achievement types, you can, we gave it specific, you have to do this one, you have to do this one, you have to do this one. You could do any achievement types where they can pick some or one and just do this one and give them the badge, okay? Um, or you can do, I, I'm not sure what specific achievement types, I don't know how to put in the all achievement types, but that must have to do with designating, again, exactly what they have to do, <coughs> okay? And so those are the pieces that go in there. And again, you can designate they have to do it more than one time. I don't know why they'd have to do it too many times, but we only had to do it once. So, that's the end. And Jay, I had, I went pretty fast. Um, I got a little nervous at 25 minutes, I had to take a deep breath and just go. Um, there is the um, website. Jay did have some cards, but they are long gone from his session. So um, if you'd like to take a look. The content is all there. Jay kind of talked a little bit about um, the course and how we have three different models. There is just, hey, take a look at the content, and that part works. And there's where you find it, and you can take a look. We'd love any feedback. We'll be here till Friday. There are um, registered user models that won't be available until the 1st of December. So if you're interested in being a registered user and, and actually um, earning the badge, because you can't earn the badge as a casual user, you have to be registered, that won't be available until December 1st. And then um, if you'd like to be a verified user, then you have to be also a registered user. And then there will be a small fee associated that, with that so that we can pay the folks that have to do the evaluation. So, questions? Yes. Okay, so that's exactly what my question is about. Um, Jay mentioned a, a cohorts of 30 and 10, 10 mentors, I think. So how much are you going to pay a mentor? <laughs> That's a Jay question. <laughs> yes, we're, we're still figuring that part out. And we're actually changing the name from mentors to verifiers. Okay. They're not really mentoring through the class. They're really verifying that what was done. Okay. The extent of the work makes a big difference if you change the term. Right, I'm sure. Uh, we actually wanted to use mentoring, but we dr it would drive the price that we'd have to charge too far. Um, the price tag on the verified portion, I think, is going to be $49. Okay. So there's not a lot in there for a mentor. There's enough in there for a verifier. Right, that makes sense. So, so uh, a mentor, a ver sorry, a verifier gets paid approximately $150 every six weeks? Oh no, no. We're only collecting $49 for the whole, t whole person. So, oh, so all the badges? The whole program, all five badges. Well, it's one, at our point it's one badge once you get verified. It's that one I don't think you've ever seen. So one big badge, include all five elements. That's the verified portion. We won't at this point we don't have a model that will verify anything less than that. It's fifty dollars per student or fifty dollars per year. Per student. 
Okay, this is your, kind of the question on what you're doing and also just on the Magic OS. So if you just have a casual user that's going in and they're submitting something. You can't. Casual you can't. user can't submit. Casual, casual user can view. And what about a registered user? A registered user? user can register for free and they can submit. Yes. Okay. And then let's say it's not being, now I'm just talking just in general, not necessarily how you're doing it. A registered user can submit. If no one's looking at that, what happens in, with that? If the badge is kicked off, it's a self-verifying badge. Okay. Just like earn, uh, a lot of badges. They still are in the badge. Okay. They still are in the badge. And uh, if, if the registered user were to use that badge on an electronic resume or something, if they, they should link it back to us. We'll have a page that explains the competencies associated with that. So as an employer or anybody that, that I would talk to, if somebody gave you a non-verified badge, it's the responsibility of the employer to go look at that. Hopefully by design it's one blog or one website with all the criteria or evidence posted. Very easy to see. And so as a registered user, you'd say, I've completed all this. Here's where you should go look. The verified model is just getting rid of that go look in the employer where the employers can say, we, we, we've already looked at this, which a lot of this, the systems in Georgia will, and we'll just take it. You know, if it has the circle, the, yeah, this is one badge, the verified badge has that white circle and another circle around it. And that will have to be administratively awarded. You won't be able to, I guess you could Photoshop it yourself. But <laughs> you wouldn't have the link back to you. A verified user will have their list name listed on a page. It says all these people are verified users, and so people can look. Okay. Question there, and then there. Okay. How have you worked with? You're the you're the Department of Education in your state. How have you worked with districts and LEAs to help them understand the difference that you just explained? Um, with the verified. Well, yeah, we have an so online so advisory group. To, to, to I mean, yeah. how, how would a district know to care about that? Yeah. Well, we have an online advisory group. There are uh, about eight organizations that belong to it now. Those are really where this would start. And so we've been showing them bits and pieces of this for six months. They're all very interested. They understand the verified portion. Probably seven of the eight districts don't have a staff to train teachers just to implement online learning. So they're very interested in sending people to us. And we've worked with them on some applicable models that might be more effective. Okay. Uh, comment and a question. So, yeah, because using the open badges infrastructure, you can't Photoshop it. I mean, okay, good. Yeah. You, good you, can't, you can't forge a badge that uses the open badges infrastructure. Um, but my question about the evidence is that is all of the evidence in Mozilla, I'm sorry, in um, WordPress? None of the evidence is in WordPress. Okay, so when you said you, they can go look at the evidence, where are they going? Uh, at the end of each quest, there's a discussion box for registered and verified users. In that quest, they're asked to post their blog link. So their work would be done oh, okay. on their blog or on a website. We could not possibly, we didn't want to, to police all that material. We didn't want pertinent discussion getting shoved to the bottom of a page with hundreds of people. So it's, it's easier, uh, you post your blog, people, your people in your cohort or others can go read, and they can comment directly on your blog. And that way you can police com inappropriate comments. We just didn't have a way to do that. And then you, you have that portfolio that you just, here's my blog, here's, right. here's my comments. Right, right. In case we ever go away. I got the one minute thing, We're so done. if you, one more question. Can you comment on your decision of going with Badge OS? Was that just because you used WordPress and it made sense to use that? Or you it? want the real, real reason? Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, went with Word, we went with WordPress first of all. Then we looked at Mozilla Open Badge. Technologically, we didn't have the skills in our organization to do it. So we went to Learning Times. And they had it for us. And we paid it. And it was the easiest implementation that we had without trying to gear up the understanding of the, the badges. Right. Okay. Yeah. And that was part of what I was supposed to say at the very end. The learning time was um, just exceptional. We did pay for a little bit of training to go with that. And they helped us really get the planning underway and how we needed to go about that. And they did a really good job with that. So they so, built the technical aspect with the WordPress and the badge system for you.
Badge OS comes from learning times, from my understanding. It just does. Yeah. I mean, so you do the WordPress and you do the Badge OS, and really, with a little bit of tweaking, you've got the pieces that you need to know. So they design that Badge OS plugin for mm -hmm. And Badge OS is free. We yeah. just paid for their support. Yeah. That's why we went that way. Okay. I think we're out of time. But I appreciate you coming. And if you have any questions, you can give us later. Thank you.